Today we will read uh, from the Lapa Kustamanjali, verse 35. O Krishodari, slender girl, your waist is so thin that I am very much afraid that it will break when I bind it with a golden string with tassels at both ends. O Krishodari, slender girl, your waist is so thin that I am very much afraid that it will break when I bind it with a golden string with tassels at both ends. Notes. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunatha hung the Shyamantaka jewel around Swamini's neck. And when this vision disappears, he laments. When will you give me your personal service? Suddenly, the vision of his devotional service returns. And after hanging the Shyamantaka jewel, he sees himself hanging a golden sash around Swamini's waist with tassels on both hands. I, Krishudar, slender girl, when will I very fearfully hang this string around your waist? Afraid that your waist will break I will hang this string around it, just to bind it up. Seeing how thin Shimati's waist is, Tulasi is afraid that it will break. The Mahajans think, Her waist is more thin than that of the lion, and it can be held even with a fist. Rade, Rade. Rade. So, we can stop a little bit here because Raghunath, in his words, and also Baba, through his commentaries, are helping us to enter in meditation about Radharani's beautiful form, which is so elegant. And when Raghunatha is saying Krishodari, actually, he always see Radhika like a teenage girl, Kishori. And in that age, all beautiful qualities and all limbs of Shimati Radhika are blooming so much that she is very, very, very attractive to her lover, but also very sweet and relishable form she has for her manjaris. And Gaudiya Vaishnavas likes 
to meditate on Shimati Radharani, who is in that age where all her parts of her body actually are blooming, becoming mature, and in that way so attractive. And Raghunath here is meditating about Radharani. And first he said, oh, Krishodari. He is mentioning the name which is according to specific Lila and also to specific Rupa form of Shimati Radharani. And in that way, he is showing us and helping us how also we should meditate by his help, by the help of other manjaris, by the help of our Guru Manjari, on Shimata Radharani. This meditation is very sweet for devotees who like Madhurya Rasa. Because they prefer to always look and meditate and think about Kishore Kishori, Radha and Krishna, who are in this teenage age, and they are very, very attractive, and in that forms. They exchange the most ecstatic, amorous pastimes. So, Raghunath here is very shortly describing this moment when he's serving Radhika, who is running. She's not walking, she is running in Abhisar to meet the Krishna. And her teeny waist is actually the sign of her great love, which is concentrated, condensed in her hard breasts. And because of that, forcing by the love, she is running. And in the meantime, Manjaris who are serving her are afraid what will happen with her thinny waist. So they are trying to protect, to bind, you know, to be more stronger, because they are afraid that something will happen to Shimati Radharani. So we can see here that this fear is so natural when you love someone. And this kind of fear in material world can be very destructive. But fear out of prema, out of pure love for Ishtadev, brings devotees a happiness, ecstasy, and brings him in deep rasa, more deeper and intense rasa relationship with his beloved or her beloved Ishtadev. So we should try to feel this feeling of love and then the feeling of fear which appears naturally for the take because 
I'm so much taking a care about my beloved Radhika that I'm always also in the fear that something happened And this kind of feeling is condensing the love of Manjari, in this case, Tulsi Manjari. And we should feel it. This is not philosophy. <laughs> this is not theory. This is practical devotional act and devotional emotion which appears in devotee. It's natural feeling. So when we, why I'm talking about this? Because in that way, by the help of Gurudev, by the help of Acharyas, we can connect our hearts and feelings with their hearts and feelings. And maybe by their kripa, causeless kripa, we will feel at least little drops of their intense feelings, which are constantly changing, actually. But their feelings are so sweet and pure that they bring themselves in rasa, ocean of rasa, but also helping us, sadakas, mm. to dive in that same rasa in which they are diving. And this is, we can say also, that this is real bathing in Radhakund. Bathing in the ocean of Mahabhav, by the, through the help of Radhika's eternal nature. Udavaji, please. Wonderful. I wanted to just <clears throat> continue a bit your beautiful commentary with uh, a thought about the fragility of love. The fragility of divine love. This this verse is a little bit unique. There aren't so many verses in Vilapakus Manjari where Raghunathas is reporting from spiritual world. But in this verse, he's describing something that's happening to him in spiritual world. And so let's remember that this is not material world, and what is in the spiritual world is not material. So Radha's body that's so tenderly described is not a material body. We know that her body is made of prem. Her body is pure love. So it's not a slender waste of skin and bones we read about. It's a fragile, infinitely delicate love that's being described. Damn, divine love is so nuanced, so delicate, so fine, and so perfect that even the move of the finger of Radha can change our world. And what we see here is that divine love, Prem, is not a typhoon, it's not a hurricane, it's not a bulldozer, it's infinitely tender and fragile. And for this fragility, we need Manjari to protect, like you were saying, Gauranga. 
she needs the monthly to care for the, her, her fragile waist, which means her fragile love, to protect it and to make sure it comes to its to its target, safe and sound. So you see so clearly the tender service of the monetary to nurture and protect the fragile love. So it doesn't need to be a bulldozer. But Adha's love is not a bulldozer. It's fine and delicate and beautiful. So this is what I think we see in this scene where Velasi Manjari is so worried that she might damage the waste, but at the same time wants to help and bind together, like you said, Stefan. Rani. That's the symptom of you are mine. When someone is in this, like Kudaji said, I am protecting you because you are mine. I will do everything to protect you because I know you are completely mad out of love. You don't think about these things. You don't care about these things. But your maidservants are here to support you. You see how Manjaris are supporting Radharani. And this is the beauty of Manjari Seva and closeness. Like you said, fragile. But this fragility, fragility, which is not coming from material body, is so strong, full of power, that Krishna is spinning around and becoming mad of such a beautiful tenderness, Udavaji said. And her form is so lavanya, so elegant. And this, in this, especially in this Kishori age, not in Kumar, not in Pauganda, especially, but in this Kishori age. And this Kishori age, Prabhupada is describing so nicely in, you remember me now, Udavaji, because I just, <laughs> it's coming. In Nectar of Devotion, Prabhupada explained actually these three phases of Kishori age, beginning, middle, and the final stage. And he's so nicely explaining, actually, that this beginning stage is coming, um, starting from 11 to 12 years, then from 13 to 14, and final stage of this maturity of teenage girl is a 15 years. So in each of these periods, Radhika's body is changing, and becoming more and more and more and more and more attractive and suitable. This is also important. Suitable for exchange of most intimate pastimes with beloved. So this fragility is actually for the purpose <laughs> of giving the Krishna pleasure. Rade. One can never serve God with love unless one know the desire desires on his mind. We must get some inputs from him, therefore. On the strength of his loving devotion, the curtain of God's mind 
will open for the devotee and he can see what is the Lord's desire. How glorious then are the thinkers who are dedicated to the service of the full Madana Mahabhava, supreme love personified, Shmati Radhika. Radhe, there is one word, curtain. So, we need the mercy, we need the kripa, that this curtain from our eyes, ears, curtain of illusion, be removed. Only that way, person can be able to see Radha Mohan. Otherwise, it's not possible. Only by their mercy or their loving devotees, it is possible. So for that reason, we need the shelter of Radharani's maidservants that they remove curtain from our heart, actually. The main curtain is in the heart. When the curtain from the heart become removed, then the senses are open to see the transcendental visions. Like our Gurudev is saying, even in this body. But not with this bodily senses. But with the spiritual senses. Curtain. Udavaji knows in Bhagavad Gita, I think, no one can overcome my. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, please yeah, say, say. No one can be free from my Maya. Guna Maya. But only by my mercy. And we, we say by my mercy, it means by my love. It's deeper meaning. Because Krishna is giving mercy. Because he is always under the control of Radhika, who is the embodiment of mercy, embodiment of his love. So we need to, mercy to that this curtain from our heart and all our existence be re removed. Please, Udavaji, help me. Just to add uh, that then this very um, important scene in the chapter 11 of Bhagavad Gita, then Krishna says, because you are my devotee, because you are my friend, I will, sh I will lift the curtain and show you what's in my heart. And it's a bit too much for Arjuna, but, but the, the gesture is very important. It's, it's by the love, by the friendship, by the relation with Krishna that he comes to know Krishna. Bhakti Maam Abhijayanti. Bhakti Maam Abhijayas. Only devotees can see me. Only devotees. Not jnanis, not karmis, not yogis, etc., etc., etc. Only devotees. Those who have pure love. And they are in some relationship, loving relationship with me. Like Prabhupada is always emphasizing. So this curtain has to be removed. If this curtain of false identification is not removed, then person will stay still in a bodily consciousness of life. Maybe he can know so many things. But if this curtain is not removed, 
is it's not possible to advance and to make another step in direction of attachment and in direction of real love and prem. So we need mercy of Acharyas, of our Gurudev. And to receive that mercy, we have to voluntarily accept the way how he is cleaning our hearts. Not a runaway. <laughs> when the process of cleaning starts. <laughs> so. Anantaji, also you can share whatever comes to you, please. You don't have to read on. On the strength of his loving devotion, the curtain of God's mind will open for the devotee. And he can see what is the Lord's desire. How glorious then are the Kinkaris, who are dedicated to the service of the full Madana Mahabhava. Supreme Love personified Shimati Radhika, who keeps even Mohana under her control. Mohana himself worships worship Prema, Divine Love. Therefore, he is also subdued by Sri Radhika's eight servant. That is their full pride and glory. Mohana became Gora to taste the love that Radhika feels for him. And after he had experienced that, he also wanted to taste the nectar of the Kinkaris service. While he relished the mood of the manjaris, the Lord's body became formed like a turtle, Kurma Kriti. Or sometimes his limbs would loosen and stretch out. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita describes Mahaprabhu's mad words after he came out of his Urmakriti. Radhe, just before we go in these beautiful descriptions, so we can see here how Krishna wanted to relish Radha Bhav and he appeared like a Gora. He also wanted to relish this position, unique position of Bavola Sarati, unique position of becoming close, shadow of Shimati Radharani in the form of her maidservant. And it's very interesting here, when he was <clears throat> relishing Radha above, so it means that he completely identified himself with Radharani. He had many symptoms of Unmadaun madness, which, which are indescribable. But when he relished Manjariba, his whole body started to completely change and these kind of ecstatic symptoms are never seen before 
and only few devotees, very, very, very close devotees, could witness this kind of symptoms. Although Krishna is Supreme Personality of Godhead, when he started to relish that he is Radhika, Radha Sevika or Manjari, different transformations of his body in that moment because of intense, 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 indescribably intense emotions of being Manjari appear and no one saw that before. For many people who saw Goranga in that state of consciousness, but also from external point, when they saw him like a turtle or when all his limbs were stretched, you know, many ordinary people told that this is it's completely madness, you know. They didn't understand. They have been horrified. But this is the glory of Manjari Ba, which is so intense that even Krishna cannot tolerate the symptoms of this kind of bhava, which is the topmost emotional ecstasy. He couldn't tolerate, he started to manifest completely spontaneously and unconsciously all these symptoms. So this is the glory of Manjari Bhava. This is the pride of Manjari Bhava. Because all these deep condensed emotions in Kinkaris are coming directly from Shimatera Dara. And Krishna tried in the form of Gora to relish it. He tried. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita describes Mahaprabhu's net words after he came out of his kurma krite. Iha hoite ajimui gelunglo vardana beko yadi krishna kore godana charana. Today I went to Govardhan Hill. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, to see if Krishna was spending his cows there. Climbing on Govardhan Hill, Krishna played his flute, surrounded by the cows. Hearing the flute song, Simati Radha came there. Oh, Saki! I cannot describe her form and the mood. Krishna took Radha by the hand and entered the cave with her. While the Sakis told me to pick some flowers. So this is the verse. If we really read very carefully, if we meditate on the mood which is present or maybe hidden in these words, this verse is very clearly showing how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first entered in this Manjari Bhav mood.
that he saw this beautiful scene on Govardhan Hill. And in one moment, Radha and Krishna, who are surrounding with the gopis, he received the hint from one of the gopi who told him, pick up, pick up some flowers. So he is showing that he was completely in the mood identification of Manjari, that superior Sakis ordered him or her, just pick up the flowers. You know, this is the one of the rare verses. There is little more of them, but rare verses which is showing this mood of Manjari Bhav, which Goranga accepted through his own words, through his own mouth. There is many secrets inside. Many secrets are inside. In the beginning of this verse, Anantaji, please, you want to, to read again the sentence today. Today, I went to Govardhan Hill. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to see if Krishna was tending his cows there. Radhe. Why he is meditating like this? This first sentence is showing for my understanding his position of someone who is completely identified with Manjari Bhav, and he's meditating on Krishna, yes, like a gopi Jayanavala. And if we know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was initiated in Diksha Mantra, but which kind of Diksha Mantra? Ten-syllable Diksha Mantra. which is glorifying Gopi Jana Vallabha. So he is showing that his position when he was meditating on this Gopi Jana Vallabha was a Manjari who wanted to see Gordon, who wanted during this meditation, who wanted to see how he uh, <clears throat> he is playing the flute and so on and meeting Radharani with other gopis. It's not Nivriti Nikunja. Govardhan with other gopis. And then after Gopi Janavalaba, Krishna and Radharani is going in the cave. And this is another mantra. So these words which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke through his own heart and mouth is showing his Manjari Bhava identification in that moment. He also is showing uh, the way how he meditated. And what is the result of meditation of Gopi Janva? I'm sure that Gurudev can remove our curtain <laughs> more and more to enter this. But I'm just full. I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm sorry if I made mistakes. 
but it's necessary to really think on each sentence. Please, Anantaji, read it again. Today, I went to Govardhan Hill to see if Mohana was standing his cow there. Climbing on Govardhan Hill, Mohana played his flute, surrounded by the cows. Hearing the flute song, Shimati Radha came there. Oh, Saki, I cannot describe her form and mood. Krishna took Radha by the hand and entered a cave with her. While the Saki told me to pick some flowers. So Goranga is saying, I cannot describe her form and mood. He's the viewer of this beautiful, sublime, sweet scene. Krishna's melody from the flute was so enchanted. Because through his through this melody, he is crying for Adorani. I want to see you. I want to touch you. I want to embrace you. I want to be in your embrace. Please come, please come. And when they came together, Radharani's form becomes so beautiful that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, Oh, Saki, I cannot describe her form and mood. And when he said, Oh, Saki, it means that he is not in the man body, in man identification like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sanyas, Goranga, and so on and so on. No, he saw him in the association of other Sakis, he cannot be like a man in the association of. Then he had to change the mood and suddenly become Krishna. But it's not the point. He said, oh, Saki, I cannot describe how she is so beautiful. Surely, <clears throat> surely this beauty is beyond description. So we are reassured. We are happy to know that it can't be described, even as eager we are to know what it looks like. It's very difficult for us <clears throat> devotees ordinary devotees <clears throat> to think the th thought of divine love and it's impossible for us to feel the feeling of divine love but if I can if you permit me to fantasize It would be something like all the senses of God are filled. So the smells that go beyond the smell sense and the sounds that go beyond the sound sense and the, and the sights that go beyond the eye sense and the tastes that go beyond the tongue. All these are completely filling the experience. Like being in the ocean, like being in water, where we're completely covered. And this would make any person go crazy. And here we read 
<laughs> that it makes it makes Krishna go crazy. He's lost control. He is the controller of the senses, and he's lost control of his senses because of the beauty of Radha. And so he's spinning and going crazy. That's absolutely miraculous. And we can certainly not feel it, but we can imagine maybe a little bit. Guru Kripa. Radhe, can I share that just shortly? shortly? So I'm, I'm wondering uh, how the uh, body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu cannot contain the emotions of the Manjaris and he gets such transformations. So I'm asking myself, so how we can uh, contain these emotions? So it means that we need absolutely the um, manjari form for that otherwise <laughs> it will vanish just recently i hear from one disciple of Prabhupada that said that he heard from his god brothers that shila Prabhupada said one one time if you uh, will see krishna you will lose your consciousness but if you will see radha you can die <laughs> so, uh, in connection with this transformation with uh, uh, Ranga Mahaprabhu, and also it it brings me a little bit more also to to think about uh, just recently Raguna does how he lived his body it can be something like similar. Radhe Radhe. So for that we need Baba Deha. And all these symptoms of Prema, and especially Mahabhava, cannot be experienced to the utmost in this bodily, in this body. And what we are listening here is just the glorification of Manjari Bhava is not something which can be imitated. It's just for meditation. How this kind of Bhava is so intense. And through this meditation, on this Lila, we are preparing our spiritual identity, our Svarup by becoming attract, attach, and ultimately crazy out of love. We are we are Radha Dasi, we because we know that Radha Radha's love is greater than Krishna. But we love Krishna too because he wrote Radha. This is courageous. Radha, Radha. It looked like, uh, I will just add something. It looked like a simple seva, simple service to pick some flowers. But uh, actually it makes a big uh, changing in the bodies of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it is a very ecstatic seva, so we can imagine just how is this seva and how is the feelings when we uh, take uh, care about the some seva and how we grow in 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 us in in manjari seva. 
culmination came in the seva. Culmination of all what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu experienced, like Anantaji said, culmination came of all these experiences. Just please pick up the flowers. Very simple seal. Thank you, Anantaji. For the service of Shishirada Mohan, the Sakis are asking the Tinkaris to pick flowers. Here is clear that Mahaprabhu, that Mahaprabhu finally came to relish the mood of the spiritual maidservant Manjaris. In the pinnacle of his ecstatic absorption. And when Mahaprabhu almost drowned of ecstasy in the ocean and all the joints of his bones became disconnected out of ecstasy, he told his devotees in half external consciousness. Kalindi de Kia Ani, Ye Gandrin Davana, De Ki Jala Krida Kore, Rajendra Nandana. Seeing the Yamuna River, I went to Vrindavan, where I saw the prince of Raja, Mohana, playing in the water with Sri Radhika and the gopis having great fun. I stayed on the shore with the other sakis. while one sakis showed the spice pants to the others. Here again, Mahaprabhu explains that he did not play an active role in Mohana's past times, but that he, she, was relishing the service position, like that of the manjari, witnessing the sweet past times without taking active part in them. This is crucial point of Manjari Bal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't take active role like usually Sakis or Radharani are taking in direct exchange of love, kisses, embraces, talks, and so on, dance, and so on, and so on. So, so this is Manjari Bhav, and this is Seva Rupaya. Always ready to be nearby them, close by them, to watch what they are doing, what, how they are behaving, and always be ready when the moment comes to serve them according to the needs and their desires. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't took active role. Now I see Krishna, I want to exchange the love with him. No. He was fixed in the position of Manjari. And he was looking, he was witnessing, watching. And honestly to say, I think that this is the greatest test, the biggest test for all us sadhakas.
And I think that it is the greatest task of Guru to prepare Sadaka for this kind of test. Because everything is so attractive, so charming, so emotionally intense, that Sadaka has to be fixed in his Tai Baba. Otherwise, immediately he will start to desire and to take active role. Yes. Jai Gurudev, Jai Gurudev. Yes. And many times he said, Ananga Manjari is the last test. Of course that she is the last test. There is no difference between Radhika and her. How will I recognize her? And when this lover comes, what will happen with my emotions? If I'm shaky, if I'm not in Staibab, he'll be attractive to me. Because I'm not fixed. So Gurudev, as I can understand in my case, very low case, he is taking so large time, so many time and patience to situate me and help me in this Thai Bhav of Manjari Bhav. Because this active role in Radha Krishna Lila is so attractive. We should be conscious about that, aware about that. And only someone who is really fixed in his Manjari Bhav, Stai Bhav, by the mercy, by the Kripa, can be properly situated, can be observer, and especially maidservant. And for that, we need the help. And for that, I cannot approach alone to Radhika. It's completely mistake. I can meditate on her, through her beautiful, loyal maidservants, because they have to prepare my Bhava Deha, they have to prepare my emotions, they, they have to prepare my activities, my seva, all my existence, so that I can feel naturally in this position, like just a shadow, little shadow of the shadow of the shadow of Shimati Radharani. I'm sorry I shared my feelings. Maybe it's completely wrong, but I'm lost case. I'm sorry. Very good. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, oh thank you. Very nice. Please share something, Guru. I thank you so much. You are helping me also. Thank you. Chaitanya Charitamrita further says, whatever he himself came to relish, he told to his devotees. Since, as is shown above, he did relish Manjari Bhava. He was the one who told it to be devoted also, notably through Srila Rupa and Srila Raghunadas Goswami. One can never understand the flavors of Raja while remaining in a mund mundane consciousness. And the devotees to take shelter of Sriman Mahaprabhu's lotus feet 
are the suitable candidates for relishing these flavors. In order to relish the sweetness of the love in Viraja, one must give up the attitude of awe and reverence towards God. Vrindavana is the kingdom of sweetness and the upasana of Rajarasa is a sweet upasana in which we want to see Mohana as the Lauki Kastat Bandhu, a good, worthy friend. This is Raja. It's not worshipping Narayan, Aishwarya. It's sweetness, beauty and sweetness. Without any formality, without any fear, hesitation of re loving relationship. This is Madhurya. Madhurya cannot be present, simply cannot be present, if there is some awe, reverence, Aishwarya. Madhurya needs closeness. Intimacy. And when we have intimacy with some whom we love, then automatically relishing is coming and is more and more intense than when in the relationship there is some blockages of awe and reverence. So for that, we need the mercy of Rajavasis and specifically not the mercy of others, it's okay, thank you very much for your blessings. But to attain my goal, thank you very much for blessings. And my goal is to be in this natural environment of natural love of Rindavan. So, this is so important. Baba is saying, Krishna is laukika, sadbandu, good, worldly friend. Good, worldly friend. This is Naralila, and everything is like a human. Good, my good friend. Onradika is my also the best friend, the heir of my life, but in worldly way. So it sounds contradictory because the, the pastimes of Radha Mohan looks like a human, but they are not human. And Udavaji in the beginning, he very nicely said, when we meditate on Radharani and her feature, her rupa, her form with slender waist, it's not ordinary girl. We should understand. This is the form, most attractive form of Mahabhav. So many devotees who want to come enter in Vraja, they have to change their consciousness and to start to see themselves and also Krishna and Radharani. Like La Laukika Bandhu. <laughs> Loki Kabandu. My Guru Manjari is my Loki Kabandu. All Radharani's maidservants are my beloved Loki Kabandus. So for that, we need the mercy. It's not coming by force, by strong, strict sadhana, philosophy, etc., etc. Our heart has to be infused. And this Laukika Bandhu moment is so important 
in the Brahma Lila, uh, when Brahma stole the cowbirds, cowboys and cow cows, he couldn't understand that Krishna has such a loving, intimate relationship with his friends. And he made big mistake, big apparat. This is Brahma Parada. And because of that, no one is worshipping him. So I will tell you, when Brahma gave apologize to Krishna, because he finally understood, oh, what mistake I made. Because I always saw Krishna like a supreme personality of Godhead that I couldn't tolerate that some covered boys are jumping on his back. I cannot tolerate the position of my supreme personality of Godhead. So he apologized in front of Krishna, but not <coughs> alone. He brought with himself Surabi or Kamadenu, I, I don't know, from Vraja to give him support. <laughs> Rajavasi has to give him support. And when he finished these prayers, I don't know, somewhere in Srimad Bhagavatam, he finished his prayers apologizing for his huge, huge, huge offense. Vishwan Chakra Thakur. It, I'm, ask, I'm talking this because it's helped me so much. Many years ago, he explained that all the time when Brahma with his four heads was giving these verses, speaking these verses of apologizing, all the time, Krishna never changed his form of a five-year-old boy. And he was looking at this person with four hands, with open eyes, like a little child, ordinary little child. And was thinking in himself, what this guy is talking about? So this is the sweetness of Raja. Krishna didn't want to change the mood of boy. And what to speak now about the other moods? So accepting Nara Lila, sometimes it's not so easy. <coughs> yes, Sudavaji. I'm so dear, I'm so grateful you stop on these two uh sentences in the class today. It's the most important sentences in in this commentary, maybe the most important sentences in the book, because it explains so uh, directly the mercy of Mahaprabhu. It explains what changed. We went from an understanding of God as far away, as authoritarian, as uh, a monopoly of truth, a monopoly of feeling. We went from this idea of God to an idea of God who says, Hello, I'm your friend. I want to have a relationship with you. And inviting all devotees, all living entities, to come and have a living, loving relationship with God. It's just amazing. And that's what this says here in this verse, in this commentary. Shiran. There is an ecstasy. Please put him on mic. 
Put him on mic, please. I'm in ecstasy. Wow. <laughs> great. Good dog, great. My God. Yeah. Well, this mercy will come that we will realize. Realization is the Kripa. When the Kripa will come, that is the realizing. <coughs> Only one thing, how to feel time how in this realization, not deviation. Thank you, Uda. Thank you. Always I need all of your words. It inspired me so much, I'm telling you. I see my Gurudev. You are the expansion of my Gurudev. Thank you. Thank you, Gurudev, for your mercy. Uh, maybe it's time that we can finish here and maybe Radha Kripa Kataksha read some poem about this. In a half an hour more. Ah, yeah, okay. No, not finish here. Guru Dev is a marathon runner. I think one. We continue. <clears throat> of course, Shimati Radhika's waist would not break so soon. But out of great, un adulterated love for her family, for her family, Tulasi is afraid that it will. What does love seek? Only the happiness of its object. Only the lovers can make the beloved happy. The lovers think May you be happy. The love of devotees of Raja is as pure as molten gold, and there is not even a whiff of personal happiness there. In Shirada Smooth, Sriman Mahaprabhu sings. Mohana is my life. Mohana is the treasure of my life. And Mohana is the life of my life. I keep him on my heart and I make him happy with my service. I always meditate on this. My happiness lies in service, and his happiness lies in some book. So I give my body to him. Mohana makes me his consort and tells me, You are the queen of my heart. But I just consider myself to be his maid servant. The maid servant just meditate on the pleasure of the Yuga Lakishora. Sri Radhika and Sri Mohana have given themselves to each other. 
and left all responsibilities for the arrangement of their loving affairs to the sakist and the mangeris. The playful Shiyugala has taken shelter of them. Unmadini Rai. One day Sri Radhika is going out alone to meet Mohana with merely Anuraga as her duty. But when she comes to the gates of the Kunja, where Krishna is waiting for her, she suddenly faints shines and unwillingness and asks her Dutika, Why have you brought me here? Even then, she tries to satisfy Mohana by making him relish the Vamya Rasta, the flavor of opposition. Mohana and the Sakis are very eager for her to give up this opposition, but nothing helps. The ocean of Mohana's eagerness increases and everyone feels great hardak. Then Vrindavana thinks, let me once see what I can do. It is the Vashahar Shavana, the blissful rainy season. Vrindavana suddenly creates a monsoon forest with its Lila Shakti. And clouds are calling in the sky with deep rumbling voices, making Swamini fearfully and tightly embrace the Lord her life. The Sakis say, Blessed you are, friend of the clouds. Today, you were even more clever than all the Sakis together. In this way, even the clouds of Rindavana are blessed with the devotional service of the Shi Yugala. This is the first meeting described by the great poet Kavikarnapura after he sucked the nectar out of Sriman Mahaprabhu's toe. Again, sometimes Mohana is helpless and finds no other means to meet Radhika but to take shelter of the mangers. The kinkar is now the grace and the beauty of the Yugala Parema. Tulasi is in the kingdom of devotional service and decorates Swamini, telling her, Your waist is so thin. On the top of that, you have a heavy burden, and under it, you have a heavy bridges, your broad hips. What if it will break? while you dance. That's why I'm always afraid. 
by calling her Lishodari, slender girl, Tulasi reminds Swamini on her previous pastimes with Krishna. Blessed is the dismayed servant. One day, Radha and Mohana have their amorous pastimes in the Kunja. Swamini is now the active lover, and Shyama is passive. The roles of the lovers are reversed. How wonderfully Krishoda removes her slender waist there. The transcendental youthful Cupid is beside himself of the ecstasy. Also, he himself is full of transcendental bliss. His mind becomes overwhelmed when he carries the burden of Mahabhava. The Nagara is overwhelmed by Shiradika's undulating sweetness. And Radharani, when she gets Mohana like this, she is attacked by two enemies, Ananda and Madana, ecstasy and Cupid. That time of dream in which I saw Mohana holding the flute to his mouth, two enemies came, ecstasy and Cupid. They stole my mind so that I could not fully see him anymore. If I could see Mohana again for just one moment, then I would decorate this second minute and hours with flower garlands, sandalwood, pulp, and jewels. Also, the desire awakens in her to praise even one moment that she can see more. Sri Radhika can not even serve him when she gets him on her lap. Thus, she feels endless partner. Sri Radhika's activity Increased Shyama ecstatic absorption. Then Tulasi leans against the gate of the Kunja and sings love song. When our hero, who is a swoon, hears it, hears it, he comes back to life again. He had lost his body or bodily consciousness. This is the explanation of the word Ananga in the Kama Gayatri mantra. Out of loving ecstasy, but now he has his body back through Ulasi's dream. Cupid regains his body as soon as the amorous pastimes resume. Tulasi thus awakens the memory of the oldest pastimes within Swamini's heart. As soon 
as to lastly take the new golden sash on each side of which is a beautiful tassel in her hand to tie it around Swamini's slender waist the vision disappears and Sri Raghunandas prays for more string than herself. Sri Rasika Chandra thus sings Listen, O Devi, to my aspiration. I stand the rather. O Queen of Rindavana, your waist is very slender, so I will bind it with a golden string with tassels at both ends. Being very much afraid that it will break. How astonishing is the beauty of your waist when it is when it is thus decorated. This is the end of the commentary. We can read the text once again. Oh, Krishodari, slender girl, your waist is so thin that I am very much afraid that it will break when I bind it with a golden string with tassels both hands. Gurudev, it's very interesting that Raghunath is here, is mentioning not only this golden string around Radhika's waist, but he is mentioning tassels on the each side. And when these tassels, the, uh, sorry, these tassels can remind Radhika On her beloved Krishna, because one tassel is Radha and another tassel is a Krishna. Oh. And when she is moving, when she is running, she is becoming Lavanya so ele elegant, but these tassels are bring her gestures, girl, her movements so elegant. And these tassels actually remember her when she is running, they are just suddenly crashed to each other. Because he could bind Radhika's waist without tassels. But purposefully, he is using this string, golden string. with tassels to make Radhika more attractive, more elegant while she is running on Abhisar and also remembering her. On Radha and her lover. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't oh. know, is it beautiful? Very nice. Then you see how she is stepping and what. I, my injuries are feel. How the manjari's vow is increasing by moving of Radhika.
Gurudev, our Radha Kripa Kataksha is ready to read his new poem for your pleasure, for Radha Mohan's pleasure and all other devotees. Yeah. If you are ready, Radha Kripa. Your mic is muted. Yeah. Thank you, Goranga. Thank you, Ananta, for the reading and everybody for the participation. Beautiful Sangha was beautiful. And uh, before reading, uh, I want to say something. Uh, uh, actually, uh, very soon will be published. Uh, a book uh, with uh, my poems and uh, with paintings uh, Guru they giving us uh, strong support for this project very soon La Banga Latica and Ananta will go in uh, and uh, this will be offering for Adam Mohan the first piece to go in the hands in Gurudev and uh, everybody who wants to take will be some copies uh, everybody who wants to connect with the emotion and divorce from Abakalatika through the paintings uh, to glorify and also receive it that's just information This song is uh, one of the newest and uh, uh, name of song is uh, Radha Madhava. Oh dear friend, you who walks beside my heart. If you want to pick flowers of eternity from the forests of Raja, don't fold your hands and call Krishna, Krishna, but first offer him the nectar of Radha's name on your palms. Then his ears become the soft and he will hear the best. And when your heart starts to melt, you will know the answer is coming. Radha Madhava. So old friend, those two words are painfully lonely when they are not together. And when you start writing them on the clouds with your eyes, you will see that the letters run into each other's arms. O oh, you who desire Krishna and offer him Vedic hymns and colorful seats, <clears throat> along with all that, offer love and you will give him everything he wants. But first, pour it into Radha's jug, the one she is holding in her arms, and she will gladly bathe him with it. However, when it overflows, this love will pour out on her feet. And when the red polish from Radha's nails starts to drip back to your heart, she becomes your whole life and it will flow through your veins and you will have no other desire. Oh, my friend, with joy enter the world of Raja's magical pastimes because you won't find anything more beautiful than this. Accept this gift offered from the golden hands of Gora Hari for the reason that it is rarely given. 
in this sweet river of Radha's love, there is no more fear. Take off the old shirt that was changing colors over many lifetimes and look for the ones who know only the color of their queen's face. The moonlight from her skin shines in their eyes. Just approach them, be their silent shadow. The fragrant powder from their feet heals. Hold it on your chest, put it on your face and get intoxicated with the fragrance of the pastures of Rindavan. Let this moonlight illuminate your spiritual self. And this is the gift offered by those hands of gold. And weep, oh my friend. This cry pulls you out of those worldly shirts. Cry and let the fear and pain pour out. Cry while happiness runs to meet you. It, while those winds from Goloka blow away that old dust from your mind, weep a sweet longing overwhelms you with the first touch. And there is no end to it, and it will get stronger. Weep as you call the names of divine couple, as it is the only way you will hear the response in your heart. Thank you for your attention. This is for adding for your satisfaction.